this is on? Awesome. Hi. Um, okay, so in case, um, thank you all for coming back. This is amazing. Um, uh, so just so it's clear, um, you're in the authority session. Um, I don't know if it was clear from the schedule whether we were all gathered, everyone was gathering here in this room this morning like we did yesterday. Um, I'm going to assume you're all here for authorities because authorities are the best. Um, it's really great to be at a conference where authorities get the big room, um, so I'm uh, really, really psyched for this. Um, so we're going to start with three lightning talks followed by two longer presentations. Um, we're starting with Eric Hansen, who is a uh, metadata operations engineer at MIT Libraries, which he thinks is the best job title ever. It is, in fact, a very good job title. Um, uh, he has previously worked at Johns Hopkins uh, University Sharing Libraries of the North Carolina State University Libraries. His work focuses on creating automated solutions for metadata workflows and aligning metadata policies and practices across systems. Please welcome Eric. So I'm going to talk today about a lightweight approach for using RDF to uh, manage a specialized authority file of faculty names in an institutional repository. So this process originated uh, when I was working at the Johns Hopkins University Sheridan Libraries, and there are currently preliminary discussions about adopting a similar process at the MIT Libraries. And I want to emphasize up front that this is not kind of a full-on traditional bibliographic authority file. It's really more of a data normalization tool uh, focused on finding authorized forms of name. So the situation that prompted uh, the need for this was um, kind of an out-of-control situation with faculty names associated with our electronic theses and dissertations collection or ETDs collection in our institutional repository, which was J Scholarship, uh, D Space based institutional repository. And the major reason for this was there was a self submission process for ETDs where students would submit their theses into Virio and enter in a bit of basic metadata, including their faculty advisor and any committee members that were associated with it. As we all know from user submitted data, that is a recipe for an untold number of variations at this date. And then after um, it was submitted to Virio, at the end of each term, uh, it would be extracted and then in ingested into J Scholarship. So this process was necessitated by a lack of access and developer time to actually modify Virio in any way. Um, it would have been nice to deal with this problem at the source, but that just wasn't in the cards. And at the time, I had been doing a lot of um, batch metadata operations with the DSpace API. So all of the steps I'm about to describe happened after um, this content was ingested into the DSpace repository. So the types of variations that we were finding, some students included titles when they were entering in faculty member names, some used nicknames while others used proper names, some included initials, and then there were a few just straight up misspellings. So these were the type of issues that we were trying to correct. And we settled on RDF as a possible solution for this, um, mainly because we could have one subject URI representing a particular, particular faculty member, and then that URI would be assigned a single SCOS pref label triple for the authorized form of data that we wanted to use. And it could have multiple SCOS alt labels for any variations that had been entered into the system that would need to be corrected. We also included just a DC date property as kind of a last modified thing um, for tracking and assessment purposes. So the workflow began with a script to extract all the names from uh, the ETD community in J Scholarship. And with that extract, we then reconciled those names against the RDF file. And that reconciliation process produced two lists, one of exact matches, 
where the name in D space uh, matched either the pref label or one of the alt labels in the RDF file. And then also a near match list, which used uh, fuzzy matching to determine similar entries that weren't exact matches. And this was done using the fuzzy wuzzy Python library. And it was, we still needed a human review of these results, obviously. So um, spreadsheets were created, uh, and we had two paraprofessionals reviewing those lists. And that ended up being the most time consuming part of the process. After the staff review was completed, we ran a script to update the RDF file with new triples, both new alt labels that had come into the system and uh, new faculty members that hadn't appeared in the system at all. And we ran a second fuzzy matching script just to make sure that no accidental duplicates had been created as part of the process. And once we were satisfied with those results, we ran a find and replace script that went through DSpace and um, found any, any form of name that was an alt label and replaced it with a pref label associated with that particular faculty. Our results were good. We went from over 2,600 forms of name down to around 1,400. And the initial process took a bit of time because there was just a big backlog. But when the process was repeated after um, subsequent terms, it went much quicker. And I've got links here in the slides uh, to the code on GitHub and also on the earlier slides I had links embedded to particular steps linking you to the exact script that I was using. And that is all. So we are saving questions for the end. Um, so if you have questions for Eric, please keep them in mind for later.